Council, would you like to introduce yourselves, please? Ron Verbomanic, Councilor for Mitchell's Position Six. Kaylee Ferguson, Position Two. Patty Verbomanic, Position One. Stephen Kirk, City Metro Mayor. Kristen Miller, City Clerk. Thank you. If everybody likes to stand, you have an add on. You can do it I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for your invocation. Please do it this time. Father, we come to you today. We thank you for all things. We thank you for the bounty and the blessings you bestow upon us. We ask you now to guide us through this meeting and help us make the right decisions. We're yes. to excuse me, establishing a quorum. We do have a quorum present. We have three seated seated members. We will have a we have one open seat at the time. We have one on medical leave. And now we will the council if they so desire to approve the resignation. And so far we're uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the resignation of Tony Capel. Thank you. Councillor B. Burbank. I'd like to second that, please. A motion made by Councillor R. Burbank, seconded by Councillor B. Burbank to accept the resignation of Tony Capel. Sorry, I'm going to like that. Open for discussion. Hearing no discussion, Councillor T. Verbeck, how do you vote? Aye. Councillor K. Ferguson, how do you vote? Aye. Councillor R. Verbeck, how do you vote? Aye. Councillors approved three ayes. Do you approve the resignation of Lynn Catmull? With that, we have two open seats, one on medical leave, so we still have established a plan. Approve the agenda. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. Councilor Pete Rubin. I'll second that. Motion made by Councilor K. Ferguson, second by Councilor P. Rubin to accept and uh, approve our agenda. Open for discussion. Hearing the discussion, Councilor P. Rubin, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor K. Ferguson, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor R. Rubin, how do you vote? Aye. Council has approved our agenda as presented. Three eyes, one, two open, one medical. We are to approve our consent agenda, which means bills, minutes, and reports. Council P. Burbank, how do you vote? Sorry. I think we need to turn the camera for the. I was trying to get some air circulating in here. You might be able to get away with it just on the first. Okay. I try to open the back door and the next screen for Oh, is it only one speed? <laughs> <laughs> the dial goes up. You're not supersonic. <laughs> oh, that was a lot more than yeah. before. <laughs> That's a lot more? Yeah. yeah. We'll try that one. She's flying off the rails. <laughs> okay. Councillor P. Burbank, back to you. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Councilor R. Verbebank. I second it. Thank you. Councilor P. Verbebank made the motion. Councilor R. Verbebank has seconded the motion to approve the consent agenda as we said. So for discussion. So discussion. Thank you. Having no discussion, Councilor P. Verbebank, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor uh, K. Ferguson, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor R. Verbebank, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you. Council has approved our consent agenda as presented. Three eyes, one on medical leave, two open. Two announcements and proclamations. City Hall will be closed July 19th, 21st for training. I'll be closed the 21st to the 24th. Myself and the clerk will be going to get a certified watermaster. Uh, City Hall will also be closed August 10th. We do have a transportation growth management kickoff next meeting. 
that's a PGM program, which if nobody's aware of that, they help uh, modify lot sizes and things like that. We can have multiple Your code. our codes, so we can have multiple homes on smaller lots. And our next council meeting, I have rescheduled to August 14th, which would be the Monday before our normal scheduled one because we have a doctor's appointment out of town. Public hearings, and of course, we have a public comment. We're to our open public comment. Now we read the description for our open public comment. Members of the public wishing to address the city council during the open public comment period must sign in at the meeting prior to the meeting's top order. The open public comment sign in at the meeting shall include topic, presenters, name, address, and phone email. During open public comment periods, the public may address the city council for up to two minutes per person. Public comments must be respectful and orderly and may not pertain to a complaint against a staff member. Rude behavior and conduct will not be tolerated and you may be asked to leave if you're being disrespectful. Public comment is for comments and opinions of the audience. If you have an agenda item, please contact the city one week prior to the council meeting. We have Mary coming in for vote. Waterworks number for quorum and oxygen signs. We have the last one. Uh, three. Oxygen signs. Oh, that's the hanging wall hanging that we've had up here. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm, yes, I'm ready. I want to know what's going on with the red bar because I don't know if anybody's checking it, but I live up there and uh, Carol used to check it every day. The water flow and everything and it's a very important thing for our city so i would like to make sure the city is taking care of our water i would like to see the wall hanging of the quilt back up and the auxiliary and legion and the preamble and everything back up on the wall and i would like to how you qualify three people that's to it should be 50 percent plus over the floor how do you call at what Standard, do you have in your records that show that just three people can represent six councilmen when it's supposed to be three plus whatever? What, where is it written? I would like to know that. But I think it's an illegal meeting to have just three people. Honestly, I'm not being picky either. Are you done? The short answer to your the open seat does not count as a seat. So if we only have two council members, we would not have a quorum because we have three seated members. Yeah. And we you have, have two, one. We have two open seats. Those don't count as filled seats. I thought it was the number of councilmen that probably the number plus one. So I can get my clarification. LRC. Pardon me. Okay, I'm not the other. You can send me an email and I'll send you whatever you Yeah, it's 50% plus one. There's, so. also the, there's also a book down at uh, mm -hmm. the Wheeler County Trading that has the charter and ordinances in it that you're welcome to copy up. So what about the our quilts that we have made? They are clean, they are packed over yeah, there. Yeah, I know they're over there. We're waiting because we're going to preserve them. Well, we do too, but I know people are missing them. So I know we, we are, we are working, we are working on completing this. It's just we're not, we don't have any manpower to fulfill what needs to be done. Madam Department. Just real quick. So when we, as soon as we did this, our insurance went upstairs and seen all of the mortar missing upstairs that hadn't been recorded. So we have the engineer coming next week that's going to come look at it, fill it, fix it. There's also roof repair that um, it was leaking down one side. Our insurance has taken us off of a replacement value to a as cost value, which is what would it, what is the value of this building? And therefore that is what would be re the amount of replacement that you would get if something were to happen to it. So it wouldn't be like, what would be the cost of a new building because of all the damage upstairs. So we have to fix that and see, we have to keep everything open so that they can come in and look at that. And then once they do that, fix it, then we can get stuff pretty back up. 
Thank you. Can we have a next? Senior meal site. Well, uh, is Chair going to have a discussion about it? Yes, it's on the agenda. Okay, I would like to uh, do my time to. Well, I would still like to do it after after she has her discussion. I could. I mean, if you might have your discussion now, that's when until the meeting's been set. <laughs> yeah. No, it's more than one from the top. It's not later. The point this is after when Sharon has her discussion. That if it uh, has to go to council for anything further, it then go to council. Because the public comment is open public comment. Everybody does their open public comment. I should not have responded, but the way it's supposed to work is doing public comment, we finish our meeting. Councilors have two minutes to respond to public comments, and I get two minutes to respond. Well, I guess, okay, then I, I, I'm giving my two minutes. Okay, I would say that. Contrary to what the city may think, this is not the city hall. This is the community hall. And the seniors uh, have quite a bit of investment in this thing, too. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened, and I won't know until after we get this discussion with Sharon and everything. But I think it looks to me like uh, the city might be wanting to move the city. The seniors out, so they can take over the hall. And that ain't going to happen because also the American Legion Auxiliary and the American Legion, though they are disbanded now, they are, they still have a better interest interest in this building. So I would say that the city is here out of uh, the goodness of uh, the rest of the people in the community. So if anybody's going to start making rules and asking people to leave and start doing the rental uh, agreements and stuff like that, then I think maybe the city might want to leave. That's it. Just to clarify something, some misinformation that may be out. We are in discussions, but we're in discussions for the city hall to move across the street. We have no intention of occupying this area for a except our continued meetings. We are we are encouraging people to come to the meetings. We spent twenty thousand dollars so far on this hall, making it more appealing. We got that lump sum of money. This was our first project. Plain and simple. We're not trying to run anybody out of anything. We appreciate the lunch. I donate. We have donated. I'm, I'm sorry that there, if there was a misconception that the city was taking this over, we do maintain the building. We do pay for maintenance on the building. We're probably going to be another $20,000 into making sure that the building doesn't collapse. And until that is done, we will not be continuing doing any more improvements because if the engineer comes in and says, we got this from the hundred sixty thousand dollar grant we got from Greg Smith. Yes. That's all funded. That's uh, all been funded by that grant, and that was the idea. Of that grant was to give it back to our community. So no, the city hall is not moving in here. The city hall, if anything, will possibly go across the street. They'll swap with us. The Judy Belt, we need some Mitchell flyers and painted hill stuff. Today, I was in Prairie City and Kansas City and Boston and Texas Woods, and we've all been asked about our painted hill festival. How can we be finding new flyers? They've also asked mm -hmm. if some of the flyers that you gave me, I need a bunch of because they're asking for them. I have family all up here that runs restaurants and whatnot. They're asking for it. So if we want to bring people to our town, we've got to get this stuff back. And I'm willing to pay for it to post it for it. So if you guys can get me some of that stuff faster the better so I can get it to me. Thank you. I can get you the flyers possibly early tomorrow morning before we head out. If and pay bills, we don't have anything to do. Okay, but also sometimes come around the 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 if we have one at the coffee shop. Got it. I'll band them up or something. Okay, they got are, you, are you going to <laughs> mail those? Or are you yes, I mail them out because I've been already asked you this morning. I took a bunch of them with me 
and every place I went into, hey Jude, how about the pain of deal stuff? So because we're trying to do the same thing. We go into okay. any place trying to go in and try yeah. and to oh, that's that's the idea. Thank you, Judy. No. There are there's a box of them at City Hall if anybody would like to come look at them. Not the whole box, but <laughs> Teresa Riley, Airbnb. Help me on starter two or right. You ready? Yep. Okay. There's many things I was going to talk about, but it's come to my attention that our community on High Street and all those up there, we've got an awful lot of Airbnb and so possibly two more coming in. And it takes away from families as it's taken away from our school. I mean, if you don't have families living up there close to the school, you don't have a school. And we need to do something to do with ordinance of only get how many you can have that are, are short term rental, but not Airbnb, but short term rentals. And I ask the council, please check it out and figure out what we can do. Uh, other communities are saying over so much percent of the housing up there, how many houses are in one area, and you can do that if it's like 10 percent, whatever, but make an ordinance that we can't have over because a one street, <coughs> five, six, that's one, one street, and so that's what I'd like you guys to check on and please do something. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adam Kirk, do we have that on the <coughs> For our agenda today, I have more to say about that, but it's that the moratorium or the ordinance is not in the packet. Okay, so we are aware of it, and the court has worked on either creating moratorium through an ordinance to stop any future ones for right now. So, thank you. It's I've been approached by um, several people also with their concerns, especially yeah. House for sale. Yeah, and yes. Thank you. Kathy Cook speeding by City Hall. Thank you for speeding. Sure. Uh, on this agenda, it says something about replacing the countertops with the, the orange, but there's nothing really wrong with them. They don't, in my opinion, they don't need to be replaced. But then again, why are we looking at replacing the countertops? Like you said before, we need to get the building structure money done before we think about spending any more money on these countertops so why is getting countertops on this agenda and quickly i also sent krista a short-term rental ordinance for her to send to the lawyer when i was still on council she needs me to resend it because the council when i was on council we agreed to do this and i take made a short-term rental i sent a copy months ago to krista and it's been dead in the water, but Chris does have one. I wrote up. I also need to be sent to the lawyer and checks. If you need me to be sent it, I'll be sent it. But I did send you one. Was there, there, was was there something about speeding? That's my help for the topic. Huh? Speeding? We can't hear you when you talk. Speeding? No, that's not what. What else? So your topic is not speeding? Stop speeding. No. Think, think before speeding. Speeding? Spending. Think before spending. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Mike Carroll, Office Fire Ambulance Maintenance. As we talked about at the last meeting, uh, Glenn and Gerald and I met and uh, I feel very comfortable with the office space that is now the fire office being shared with Daryl and whatever the ambulance can be, we have some storage in there. Um, but we would really like to see a window put in there and an air conditioner put in as soon as possible. But this is something that's been talked about for years and, and it's going to be used, especially for Daryl being used in on a regular basis. It's important that we get those things done. So, and we please do whatever we need to do to push that through and get it going as soon as possible. And then I thought there was there was maybe approval of me to have some sort of debit or credit card so that I can purchase the annual supplies. And I don't see that on the agenda. 
approved as well. I think that was approved. So remember, I told you they had to approve the minutes, which they just did. So they just now approved them. Oh, okay. So that all was just minutes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Max. And yes, we have had the discussion a number of years of putting up in there. So we all put tabs and they do that. But we're also working on swapping spots with the sheriff's department because they want to. They don't need that bigger space where we could actually separate city hall in mass. So um, it is a conversation. So I believe uh, Lieutenant Elliott has informed me that if they do occupy it, they will take care of any further. So either way, we'll, we will. Is there a on the agenda item? Is there an agenda item? Is it? It is an agenda item also, right? Uh, Dave Salvage for land. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Council can see what I'm talking about. The purpose of public lands is to benefit the public. And we all know that the land I purchased from Denny and Davis, Denny Davis and Pat Davis here has a 60 foot easement called Covington yeah. Street behind Cabby Cook, Peggy, Jim Bob's old house uh, where Christy Hudspeth lives. And we all know that it will probably never become public street, even though when they subdivided this Huddleston's first edition, in the late 50s or early 60s, they put the street in. So what I'm wondering is, I know we've already had discussions about this with Matt Davis and Matt Davis says you can't deny legal access to people's houses because when they first subdivided this, they broke it up so that all of those lots could be split in half. And if you look at all of those people's deeds of record, they show a dotted line through the middle of their tax lots that show they could break those up into other tax lots. And we know in the future that could happen. So the way I see it, if the public isn't getting any benefit out of this 60 foot by 834 foot strip of land, which accounts amounts to around one acre of land, why not? And this is just a thought. We're not looking for any answers right now. I'm just saying, if you sold it to me, you then get the opportunity to tax me on that acre. I could put a street in. It would be a private street. It could then be taxed because private property is taxed. So you'd not only get the land, you'd get the tax on the street. I could develop the street and give every single landowner along here a lifetime easement. And then it would be a road and they could access that. It's just a thought. Um, and it, I don't know if that would hold a grain of sand in legality to be able to take a street that's supposed to be for the dedicated use of the public. Yep. Really? Okay. Well, we'll talk about it again. Yeah. If you'd like to get on the agenda, let me know. And if you give me that stuff ahead of time, yeah. you have a chance to do it. Because okay. I still have enough time for them to. Sure. Yeah. No, and I, so I just want to get the ball rolling. I just want to talk about it and get everybody thinking about it. Because it's a possibility that for 60 years we've had land that's just well, doing nobody any it's, good. That's not quite like accurate though, because those um, parcels are already divided. They are. They are. They're already divided, and um, so everybody pays. They they asked to have those on one tax bill, but they're already separate. Okay, they're already separate. So everybody owns two tax laws. Everybody owns. Two Okay. Everybody owns two tax lots, and um, it was suggested that the city not give up public rights, mm -hmm. and especially because of that, they're already subdivided. You need that space. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have any correspondence. No. Grant opportunities and updates. Um, I did get back with the people from um, yeah, that's why I got back. 
the people from the, the um, I'm just drawing a total blank right now. Park? I can't even know the, no, the recycling people. Park. There is. And the grant that, or the um, questionnaire that I filled out was actually for their 24, 26 year. So we will not be uh, getting any more information about that unless they do go ahead and choose to pick this um, as a project for them to go ahead and go on for. They did thank me to, for filling out the information and they said that they would get back to us. So we're here at the beginning then, huh? First on the list. <laughs> Anything else for uh, grant opportunities and updates? Go. Uh, items removed from the consent agenda. Do we have any items to remove? No, we're to old business, the Ashenite easement contract. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, do you want to The council asked uh, me to get a hold of the attorney and find out whether a new easement contract would benefit us to. <laughs> redo that contract he does not feel that the benefit outweighs the cost however um, i did a follow-up after his assessment and asked about a some sort of cooperative agreement that would say who's doing what and when who's shutting off the water the water rights and things like that and he says well that's a whole other thing you could go ahead and drop that up but it's not binding so to me, it would seem, you know, good fences make good neighbors and to have so that if we're, you know, both on an understanding of we give you this much amount of time to before we come onto your property, unless it's an emergency, those kinds of things. But if that's not something that you want to entertain, you don't need to. Did we have any contact from Hashtag's attorney with any concerns? Yeah. They are... Uh, they have a records request in right now for a subdivision. I don't, until I fulfill that, I don't really. Council, do you have any questions or concerns about moving forward? Did anybody from uh, the house night, were they concerned about anything? Did they want the city to proceed further with the uh, a more of a decisive description on I that have, contract. I have not had that conversation with them. I have stayed away from that. I did meet the contact when Terrell and I and the mayor went out and toured the area as Terrell is leaving. Mm -hmm. And so I did meet her and um, so she knows to contact the office and she has my cell number if they need anything, but I didn't go into any contractual stuff if they're the branch managers. Right. I think at minimum we need to at least look at removing um, Dan and Jane to me unless we have a piece of note people will no longer be residing up there. So. But it, the easement follows the land right it's right. not uh, yeah. following the the signer of right. the contract yeah. so would you have updated information of contact up there yeah yes who do you hold of yeah yeah so would council agree to follow our attorney's advice by i think at this point it's probably fine but at some point you may want you may want to look at that, establish the relationship and just kind of see what they're looking at. And, yeah. Um, you know, not push for any, you know, any one thing. But yeah, I did. Yeah. Maybe with consistent discussion or in contact with it, it may not be an issue. So is this something that can uh, we can come back to should we feel that uh, we should write up, uh, write up. Um, what were you saying that was called? Like a cooperative yeah, agreement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all you would need to do is, you know, 
just let me know that you want to entertain that. Or sure. We'll put it back on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So for now, that will be removed from our business unless council does decide to, or unless we are approaching. Yeah. Yeah. And here, <clears throat> Secretary for EMS discussion and action. Uh, after you went ahead and approved the stipend, then there was some other questions, which is what if somebody signs up and they don't go on runs or they go on part of the runs or um, how, you know, just what yeah, situation? I mean, yeah. is, it, is it based on, you know, that like a, you're, you're doing what is supposed to be done or is it just everybody regardless? So um, I don't necessarily need an, is it paid monthly, is it paid once a year? I have another clerk who pays their stipends once a year. So um, there is more of a resolution that you would like me to present um, to make those decisions and happy to do that. I think that that would be, that would be wise to have it as a resolution so that the future, if five years down the road, somebody needs to look back at that, you can not have to look through minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be a good idea. The other consideration is also once you do pay a stipend, um, your volunteers become employees. Mm -hmm. So would we need to have CIS? No, we would just, um, just 1099 folks. Yeah. And um, if they don't get, it was sort of like if, if somebody gets water and somebody gets money, is that the same? Or should everybody just get a check? Like one check at the end of the year. It's nice to offer water that, I mean, you can take it out of the water fund if that's what your intent is to give some people, you know, free water and mm -hmm. the folks that don't live in town. The, the, so there's just some more consideration before, before we draft that all Before together. I start making payments and who's yeah. getting what. Can we put that to our work session for more deliberation okay. and brainstorm some ideas? Because those are good points that you brought up about how does that get divided? How do we want to pay that if those scenarios arise, like you said? And I don't have the answers right now. So. Uh, I, I think minimum they get into each participating at a minimum percentage at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, yeah. again, we can discuss at the work session, so we're not taking it with this Correct. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, approve office space for watermaster maintenance positions at City Hall. Um, I realize that um, Mr. Carroll and Terrell and everybody came together to decide a space for Terrell, but then we also have now to another employee that would also need a space. So um, I don't know what you plan for that. What do you, I'm sorry. I, I was think for the term until we get over here figured out, they can share the same name. Yes. Because they're, I mean, maintenance will be working with water, and water will be working with maintenance. We <coughs> don't need separate offices. I don't see where we're right now until we figure out what we're doing across the street. I just mean that that's a very crowded space to have three people. In one desk. Mike, the other is not the way to this thing. It's not a problem. Glenn is not in there that often. No, I'm not in there that often. Carol and whoever that other person are just being the only person. There's plenty of room for two people to work. All we need to do is say we're going to do something and then get it set up so we can do it. And then if you need to change it afterwards, I mean, I'm not talking about major changes to the building structure. They're just the office arrangement. Then we can do that. Council, any input? So, then three of you or four of you, but 
share one desk basically and would you each have your own like drawers or two two oh okay Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. We, most of our paperwork is in the big office where the table is. Uh -huh. But we do have some storage in there. So we don't really use the desk at all. Yeah, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, paperwork retention is important and making sure that those things can be found. Otherwise, if it's not an issue, then. But if your intent is to move everybody, or just me to the justice. So I don't know what your intent is, but if that's the case in the sheriff's office, we're going to go ahead and put a door in and a window or a window and an air conditioner for the officers to then put a door in. So it's turning right around and redoing what, what you're just now approving. So I guess what is your final plan? Let's work towards the final plan. If, if everybody's staying up there and just moving or I guess I don't really have that answer yeah I don't know I guess I'm just a little lost on what you mean I think <laughs> some people have some comments um, I don't think at this time anybody's moving anywhere <laughs> <laughs> now you just get a, a door in there with an office the Fire department, EMS, the sheriff's department doesn't have to She keeps the, office, the main office up there and we work out of the other office. If you move move down here, you're going to have to put a septic in besides putting water. We talked about getting water to the building, but that building will have to also have a septic, in, which will be twenty to $40,000. <laughs> The the initial issue was the records are not stored in a place that is locked. I don't have the room to yeah. keep everything where I am. Okay. And then half of the records are over at the Justice Hall, yeah. the, the older, older records. So you've got records down there, you've got records upstairs, and you've got records that are in the office and then also behind my gate. There's records everywhere. That was initially what and I thought that what it was originally stated and thought that by moving you and all of the records over here for record retention then then the ambulance EMS and Carol the water master and the maintenance people will be able to be up there as well as the sheriff's office mm -hmm. up there correct mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> in regards to the need of a, a septic tank over there, how long has the sheriff's department been working out of there? Um, they've been there as long as I've been here. Really. But they, they, and they seem to got by pretty good without a septic tank. Right, but if you have a full, if you have an employee there, you have to have a facility. Just, yeah. <laughs> Post office has a contained system that is a pumped. Mm -hmm. yeah, like tiger cans, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what the yeah. you know, yeah. pumped, but yeah. as much as yeah. tiger cans. Yeah. Right, right. And then <laughs> so we wouldn't need a second. The EMS law has the same thing also. Yeah. So it would be minimum uh, uh, minimal cost. It's not gonna be upwards of ten or twenty thousand, forty thousand dollars. So um, I think but what we need to come to a consensus before we do any improvements to an office up there is to figure out what we want to do with creating a secure spot, number one, for our records, because they're not secure. Unfortunately, they're not. We're doing the best we can to make sure that they are all secure. So that is a concern about with CIS also is our not only our record retention, but the security of them. So uh, maybe at our work session, we can come, we can work on coming to a conclusion. What kind of volume are you talking here? For, for records? Yeah. Oh, wow. um, you know, like a pickup? Yeah. 
really oh, easily. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. easily. Yeah. Yeah. Is it all seven years concurrent? Or? Well, it's not like that. So, like your financials are forever. Um, everything has the drip retention. If I had the opportunity to be able to go through them like I should, then I could downsize that for sure. Um, but to what degree, I don't know. So we did. I I've never I've been in any shows where it's kind of floating around the water meters last night. That option, that room is big enough, and we would not be losing any income from the rental from the sheriff's department because they pretty much in conversation we pay the same amount to rent. And they would be willing to do the door and also on their back. If you would like to put it on a work session, that's that is fine. Um, I did call DEQ and Jesse Barnes and um, there has, she doesn't have a record of there having been a subject there. Um, so you're doing on site in the permit and it's, I, I can't remember, uh, somewhere around $1,500 for all of that. And would that be the vault as well? That's just for her to come out and say that you can put it there. I mean, it's seven fifty for the first um, application, and then the site inspection. Mike, real quick, I saw a couple quick comments. One, it doesn't sound like you're ready to make a decision. You have to need to know some more information before you do make a decision. If it affects the three of us, please consult us about us have a chance to have a say. Um, there's going to be a fourth person here. So yeah, I'm going to have, more than happy gonna have a, wa a water yeah. master here. I'm more than happy to include that fourth person in the discussion. Right. Thank you, Mike. All right. I appreciate you. your time. Thank you, Mike. I'm on you. Anything else for our whole business? So we agree to do that for work session to uh, Yeah. Okay, we're for our new business. At this time, we'll be going into an executive session. <coughs> ORS 192.6602B. Dismissal or discipline of or to hear complaints or charges throughout against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual agent who does not request an open hearing. Hearing by the now meeting in executive session for the purpose of. RS 2192-6602B. The executive session is held pursuant to RS 192.662B. This is which allows the commission to be an executive session. ORS 192.6602B is considered dismissal or discipline of or to hear charges or complaints against an officer, employee, staff member, or agent if the individual does not request an issue. So moving forward, we will, we're going to go into 